Now that we know how the signal flows inside of the VST audio channel settings, we can talk about applying insert effects. And so let's use this acoustic guitar track as an example. I'm going to click the edit button to reveal the audio channel settings window. And as we learned in the last video, the inserts are what the signal flows through first. Now you can put any effect plugin that you want to on an insert. However, inserts are really made for plugins that affect the volume or the tone of a particular track. So let's add a compressor to the first insert. And a compressor is one of the most basic and useful devices that you can use in a mix. So let's click on this first insert slot. And when you click and hold your mouse button down, it will reveal all of the different plugins that you have at your disposal. Now there's a whole bunch of plugins that you're looking at right here that you may not see in your version of Cubase, and that's because I have a lot of third-party plugins installed on this particular computer, and so let's only use effects that you and I have in common. So let's go up to the Dynamics category, and we can look at all of the different dynamic effects. And these are things like compressors and de-essers and maximizers and so forth. But let's just go with a standard compressor. So when I hover my mouse over that and then release the mouse button, it will insert that compressor effect into the first slot. Now there's a couple of buttons that we need to talk about at the top here. The power button on a plugin works the exact same way as a hardware effect processor. You turn the power on and it's working. Turn the power off and it's disabled the effect. So we're going to leave the power turned on and conversely there's a bypass button and the bypass button works the same way as it does on a hardware effect processor too. And then there's the edit button and the edit button like I've talked about in other videos is what you click on to reveal the control panel for a particular effect, virtual instrument, or channel inside of Cubase. So if you click on the edit button of this first slot, which has a compressor assigned to it, that's how you get to the compressor control panel. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to close the compressor, and now you'll notice that the edit button is gray. Now if I click on it again, it becomes blue, and that means that the control panel is now visible for the effect effect that you have on insert number one. Now a compressor is a dynamic processor, and what I mean by that is it controls the dynamic range of the track that it's inserted on. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to solo this acoustic guitar track, and let's take a listen to it without the compressor on. So I'm going to click the bypass button, which you'll notice is identical to the bypass button on the slot itself, and let's listen to just the track before we do any processing on it. Now this track has some dynamics in it. There are times where it's being played softer and other parts where it's being played louder, but it can also get a little bit dodgy as far as volume goes, so a compressor can smooth out those jumps in dynamics. So let's turn on the compressor and let's call up a preset by clicking in the preset window. When we do, we get this list of presets. And let's scroll through the list here and choose something that is in the realm of acoustic guitar. Let's go with strummed acoustic guitar. Now if you single click on any of these presets, you can audition during the playback. So I'm going to start the playback on our project, and since this track is soloed, we'll only be hearing the acoustic guitar. Now let's try some different settings. Let's go with something that isn't a guitar setting, like a rock bass drum. You can hear how the dynamics have been altered considerably. Let's go with a Wurlitzer. Actually, I kind of like how that Wurlitzer effect sounds. Even though it was designed for a keyboard, it sounds pretty good when it's processing an acoustic guitar. So if I wanted to go with those settings, I'm going to double click and that will close the presets window. 
So now that we have some compression settings called up, let's listen to the playback and use the bypass button to listen to the before and after. You can hear that with the compressor on, the volumes have been smoothed out, and it makes it a little bit easier to hear that track even during the quiet or sections where the guitar was played softer. So that's a pretty good setting for this track. Now I'm going to close the compressor control panel, and I should also mention that the insert effects are on a channel-by-channel -channel basis. In other words, the inserts that you use on a particular track do not affect any other track. The insert slots will only process the track to which they are applied, so they don't have any effect on any other tracks. So I'm going to close the channel set settings window for the acoustic guitar, and let's move on to the vocals quickly. I'm going to solo the vocal track and then click the edit button on the vocal track, and let's put some more inserts on this track. Now they still have to be volume based, but there are different types of volume based effects. Let's look at some of the possible effects that we could use. For example, we could use the pitch correct plugin on a track if we didn't want to go in and do any very audio editing, we could simply come down to the pitch shift category and choose pitch correct. And then this song is in uh, D, D major, I believe, so we will set the scale source to internal and then change it from a chromatic to a major setting and choose the root key as D. And then we're going to close this control panel. So we can use those same types of buttons on the very first slot, but instead of using a compressor plugin, we're now using pitch correct first. Then the signal flows out of insert number one, which is the pitch correct, and will go into the next slot. So let's put the compressor on this slot, and let's just quickly do this. Let's go into dynamics and call up a compressor and choose a preset like... Let's use R and B lead vocals just as an example, so I'm going to double click that. And then let's put a de-esser, which is another insert effect that takes away the S's. It de-esses the track so that the sibilance will be reduced. So I'm going to click on the third insert slot, go to dynamics, and call up the de-esser. And we'll just use this on the default settings. And now if we listen to the track, you cannot say you know how I feel. Let's listen to the track without that some of these effects on. Let's turn off or bypass it, the compressor. But you know it isn't true. With the compressor off, some of the loud parts of the vocals become too loud. You cannot walk a mile in my shoes. And then the soft parts are a little bit harder to hear. That's something only I can do. So let's turn the compressor on and hear the difference. You cannot say you know how I feel. And then let's do the same thing with the de -esser. That might sound good when you say it, but you know it isn't true. With the de -esser bypassed, you'll hear more of the S's and T's. You cannot walk a mile in my shoes. That's something only I can do. Let's turn the de-esser on. You cannot say you know how I feel. So that's how you apply insert plugins to the insert slots. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how to reorder the plugins that you have assigned to the insert slots.